Under the video about Oppenheimer, I received a comment, digital soft zoom filter and lots of grain slash noise, you're welcome. What can I say? Internet access one hand and you don't need a girlfriend anymore. I mean, the result is gonna be pretty much the same, but the whole thing is about the process. So well, I'm not as young as you may think. I grew up in the 90s when film cameras were the only cameras available and also my first camera was a 45mm Pentax PC 550. The digital era has barged like a wind of change. It was a break for sure for non-professional consumers at first, but it was quite obvious that the days for film photography were numbered. With the money received on all possible occasions, I bought a digital Sony P72. Great camera for the time which unfortunately required overpriced memory stick pro cards. Few years later, for my 18th birthday, I bought a Canon 1000D, my first DSLR to get this mystical shallow depth of field. And well, let's stop here for a minute. I wanted to show some shots from this period, but I was actually horrified by how many of them are just trash. I mean reckless, random photos with no good reason for taking them at all. But let's continue the story. I started working as a wedding photographer, back then it was a dream job for me. I was shooting with all the Canons, starting with 6D through 5D, ending on R6, which still I find as a perfect digital camera. Like, there is nothing more I can expect from the camera, but what I'm getting into is that I was working every weekend, going through thousands of shots from each wedding, spending hours in Lightroom. Photography was not fun for me anymore. I wasn't taking a camera for vacation because I knew that this whole process would be the same. You may say that I don't have to take so many shots. I can treat a DSLR as a 35mm camera, but well, you don't have to cry watching Mufasa die in Lion King, though it's hard not to. But there is one more thing about modern photography. You take photos looking through the electronic viewfinder, then you edit them on your monitor of PC, notebook, whatever, and after all you view those shots on your phone screen, so as a matter of fact there is not much photography in photography. In 2022, right before New Year's Eve, I was like Jack in the Lost series. I decided to go back and I bought a Canon 650. We have to go back! I knew that EOS was an analog system years before, so I just wanted to buy the first EOS ever made to have a classic gear but compatible with all my lenses. There was no research at all and the price of about $20 confirmed my decision. A few days later I took 650 on my short new year holiday and well, I think you can figure out the end of the story. I once again fell in love with photography. So I spent 3 days with Fuji Superior Extra 400, not knowing back then that in a few weeks this film gonna be out of stock, but well, something has shifted in my head. I started to care about every frame, thinking, is this really worth capturing? It's a whole other thing than just pulling the phone out of pocket, taking five or six same shots and letting them get lost in the maze of saved memes, screenshots and other so important things in my gallery. I know those photos are not masterpieces, but well, this is how I remember this trip. The old town architecture, suburbs, backyard full of Winnie the Pooh accents, garden of lies and our flight home. One more thing for comparison, my mother visited the same town a few months later and she took this shot with her new Samsung. So, a 40 year technological gap and with all my love to her, I prefer my shot with, no doubt. It's all about the process. It's not impossible to take a shot like this with a phone or a digital camera to take off some contrast, add grain, play with colors, but well, that's precisely the problem I had with digital. You can fix everything in pose, even emulate the film look, change white balance, crop the shot without losing any details, change the exposure. No such flexibility on film makes that photography remains photography. As a wedding photographer, I assure you that what's done before the shot always looks better than fixed in post. You just have to be more conscious, but the results are satisfying as hell and making things right before pressing the shutter button makes you a better photographer at the end of the day. 
Film photography is about keeping memories and catching the moments. You can't check the shot on the back of your camera, so you move on having the moment exposed the way it really was. It's not like taking 10 portraits of your girlfriend in a row, then another 10 after she finds that those first were bad and it ends with an unnatural Barbie-like pose and probably in a half. Memories are not perfect, just like film. Celluloid is not even close to those pristine shots from modern sensors with millions of megapixels, but after all, it's not what we are expecting from photography. At least, some kinds of it. If we want to capture the memories, we want those film colors, we want grain. We want a little bit of soul in a shot, not clinical perfection saved with combinations of ones and zeros. So yeah, as I said, it's all about the process, about discovering photography in a bunch of different ways. You may not agree, but analog is relatively cheap compared to digital. I mean, choosing Canon years ago was more binding than marriage or a mortgage. With all bodies and lenses, I can just switch to Sony to try bokeh in their new 50. But having several different, let's say, vintage cameras won't make you end up sending a kidney, unless there is Mamiya 7 on your wishlist. Anyway, film photography is a different workflow. If your shot is a piece of crap, it will probably remain a piece of crap, no matter how good you are in Lightroom or Photoshop. It requires to slow down, to plan what film to use. Like, I knew before the flight that Skaltubu was made to be shot on Portra. I knew before buying train tickets that I want to capture Warsaw architecture in black and white. I bought Senna Color with the aim of using it in Valletta and I knew that Orwo will fit Medina. I'm thinking about composing before taking a photo, waiting for the right moment, but after finishing the roll I can just take it to the lab and wait for an email with the scans, which is so satisfying because there was no way to see these images before. And of course, not every shot is perfect, like the vinyl is not as perfect as ACD, like the old timers are not as reliable as modern cars. And just to be clear, my thoughts do not lead to the conclusion that film photography is better than digital. It's different. Like, technically, film can beat modern gear in numerous cases. Like, loading hectare for product shooting makes no sense at all because every benefit film can give you is irrelevant here. You need a picture as clean as possible, sharp as a tack with accurate colors. I want to be pushing Portra to 6400 ISO just to prove I can shoot a wedding in a dim church without a speed light. Shooting film is not about being crazy. It's all about the process.